All right, in this video, I'm going to try to explain the uh, four track changing system. So I've kind of gone back and forth on the best way to do this video. Uh, originally, I had planned to build the whole thing in game and explain it as I built. Now, unfortunately, I have uh, done a couple of test runs of that and it's taking me on average 20 to 25 minutes to build the circuit. Uh, so that may be a little long for a, a video. Now, um, what I'm going to do instead is kind of give you a quick demo of what we're actually talking about uh, when we say a four track changer and then we'll look at the redstone diagram and from there we will come back in game and kind of explore how I implemented the diagram in game um, and hopefully that will give you a, a pretty good idea of, of what we want to do here but without further uh, delay let's go ahead and get into it so here I have four buttons and those correspond to four possible destinations. So if I press button number two here, you can see the second indicator light comes on. And then if I go and hop in my minecart, I end up at track number two. So uh, that's the basic idea when we're saying a four track changer. So let's look at the redstone diagram here. Now immediately when we look at this diagram, uh, we can see that there uh, it's pretty good symmetry uh, in the diagram. So we can kind of distinctly talk about the left side and the right side as almost two independent halves. Uh, each side has a RS NOR latch and our inputs for that side, so here we have the left side inputs, they correspond to the set and reset buttons for each RS NOR latch. So one RS NOR latch, uh, second RS NOR latch, and then uh, the various buttons are the set and reset for that. Now you can also see I have uh, the inputs joined together per side, and they run up here into a second RS, or I'm sorry, a third RS NOR latch. Uh, that's kind of our central RS NOR latch here. And what this is going to do is allow us to choose which side that we want uh, currently active. Uh, and the way we can do that is through this kind of little three block setup I have here. Now if we look at each half of this, say let's just look at the left half right here. This is basically a repeater on the left half, but you can see the right half is missing this final torch. So the right half is acting as an inverter. And what this will do is even though we have the same output coming from the central RS NOR latch, we will always have inverse outputs going to the two sides. So whenever the uh, left side is, is active, the right side will always be inactive and kind of vice versa uh, between the two. So let's kind of uh, press a button and sort of follow the logic. So if I hit button number two here, first of all that's going to set the state of number two's uh, RS NOR latch, so the left side's RS NOR latch. Uh, so that, in this case, set the RS NOR latch to an inactive output. But it also is coming down here and setting the state of our central RS NOR latch. So it set the central RS NOR latch to an active output. Since that's just going through a repeater, uh, both of our NAND gates right here will get an active output coming from the central RS NOR latch. Now the first NAND gate is hooked up directly to our RS NOR latch, our left side RS NOR, RS NOR latch, and which in this case has an inactive output. So a NAND gate with an inactive output and an active input is going to give us an active output. So uh, from there we run up to our first torch here and an active wire going into a torch is going to turn that torch off. We also are branching off of the output from the first NAND gate and going into our second NAND gate. So we're still getting an active input from our central RS NOR latch right here. Uh, but we're also getting an active output from our first NAND gate right here. So active and active is the one situation that's going to lead to an inactive output for our second NAND gate, which will in turn uh, cause this torch to come on. So basically by having this sort of inverter right here that gives us different sides that are always going to be opposite of each other, when we run an inactive power into a NAND gate, well, since both of our, our NAND gates are receiving one of their inputs uh, based on the state of the central RS NOR latch, 
if that is inactive, there's no way that either of these torches are going to turn on because uh, a NAND gate with one inactive input is uh, always going to have an active output which will turn off our torches. So it really doesn't matter what the state of this RS NOR latch is as long as this whole side is deactivated. So I know that was probably a mouthful. Uh, I will definitely upload uh, both this test world and the redstone diagram so you can take a look at it and um, play around with things and hopefully you know figure out exactly what's going on. But for now, let's look at how I kind of implemented this in-game. Uh, let's see, that was weird. Um, so first of all, we have our four inputs coming from our, our stone buttons up above. And those are plugging into our RS NOR latches. So here's the left side RS NOR latch. If I come over here, we have the right side RS NOR latch. Then we also have the joint output from our buttons per side. So there's one side and here's the other side. And to save on space I just have those joint inputs uh, running underground here. So they basically just run straight underground and then pop up here and plug into our central RS NOR latch. So here's our combination repeater and uh, inverter. And then the two NAND gates per side right here. So there's the left side's NAND gates, and then the right side's NAND gates. So pretty much exactly like what we see on the diagram. So that's kind of why I think we can get away with just looking at the diagram rather than building the whole thing in-game here. Now the final thing I kind of wanted to show you was the track itself. Now if I take a look at this track, the way I have it set up, is basically just sort of a long strip with intersections uh, every so often underneath our, our torches here, or above our torches. So when a cart is traveling down the track, the uh, the unselected state, so track number one is not selected, so the state of our track is actually powered. Uh, basically I have a torch above the final output torch um, for our circuit, so that's acting as an inverter and you know allowing me to to kind of move that torch up a block. So if I have uh, a powered torch which corresponds to the deselected track, that's going to stick my track in an east to south uh, orientation, which we know is the the powered state for uh, tracks in this world. So what happens? So when my cart comes and hits that curve, it's going to just skip over it and continue on. However, when I get to my selected track, which in this case is track number two, that corresponds to an unpowered torch, which allows my track piece to swap to its natural southwest orientation. And since my uh, cart is coming along this way, it's going to hit this curve and turn off to the correct destination. So just like that. Now the final thing I'll say about it is at the end here you can notice I, I don't have any tracks beyond this point so this track is actually never swapping back and forth um, but the reason for that is we know if track 4 is not selected uh, based on the way our circuit works one of the previous tracks has to be selected um, because there's no way that we could have track 4 not selected and all the other tracks are unselected as well because we'll, at least one of our outputs has to be selected. So we're never going to get into a situation where the cart is going to make it all the way to track 4 uh, before it turns off because if one of these other ones is selected pr before track 4 then it's always going to turn off before it reaches track 4. And so there's no reason to actually have this swap back and forth. I mean, you certainly could put extra track right here, but there's never going to be a situation where your cart will actually go down it. Uh, so that's just something I kind of wanted to point out. But um, that is about it for our four track changer. I know um, looking at a redstone diagram may have seemed kind of unsatisfying if there's a lot of... Um, you know, people calling for it, I may try to go back and just build a no commentary, uh, just me building the circuit itself video. Um, 
and and that may help out a little bit but I think it's going to be a lot easier to kind of get a grasp on things by looking at the circuit diagram so I suggest you download that and uh, I'll post a link to this test world too so you can look at the circuit implemented in game along with all the other stuff we've talked about in this uh, tutorial series and uh, so thanks for watching I hope it's been useful um, the one disclaimer I will make before I go is complex circuits like this are pretty hard to troubleshoot even if I'm actually in the world so it may be rather difficult for me to help you out based on a 500 character YouTube comment so uh, I will do the best I can but if you get a uh, somewhat unhelpful response from me or I basically just say I have no idea uh, I'm not trying to um, offend you I just you know don't really have the ability to to troubleshoot everyone's uh, redstone circuits so I hope if I can but no no promises there I guess uh, but anyway uh, hope this is helpful thanks for watching